Hello, KGR readers. I'm Cha Kyung Yoon from the Department of Radiology at Severance Hospital, Yonsei University College of Medicine in Seoul. I am honored for this opportunity to introduce my research in the Listen to Others section. My study topic is a randomized controlled trial of ultrasound guided percutaneous biopsy with needle track plugging of focal liver lesions on an outpatient basis. Image guided percutaneous liver biopsy or PLB is the gold standard for histopathological diagnosis of liver disease or focal liver lesions. Post biopsy bleeding is the most concerning complication with overall incidence of 12 to 20%. Clinically significant bleeding defined as bleeding requiring hospitalization or possibly transfusion, embolization, or surgery occurs more rarely with reported incidence of 0.5 to 1.2%. Post biopsy bleeding can be evaluated on Doppler sonography as a linear track of color flow along the biopsy track, also known as the patent track sign. The patent track sign may suggest a higher risk of progression to clinically significant bleeding with high sensitivity and negative predictive value. In the era of precision medicine, there is increasing demand for more than two tissue cores, especially for genetic profiling or clinical study enrollment. This raises concern for increased risk of biopsy-related bleeding, since previous studies suggested that increased number of liver capsule penetrations was associated with increased risk of bleeding complications. The coaxial method may provide the advantage of being able to acquire many number of tissue cores via single liver capsule penetration. Additionally, it allows for needle track plugging, or NTP, which is expected to further lower the risk of bleeding complications. However, no prospective or randomized control study has been performed to evaluate and compare the safety and efficacy of the coaxial method with NTP and the conventional method. Therefore, the aim of this study was to compare the efficacy and safety of US-guided PLB between the coaxial method with NTP using gelatin particles and the conventional method on an outpatient basis. With this purpose, the primary endpoint of this study was to evaluate the presence of patent track sign on Doppler sonography. Secondary endpoints included the duration of patent track sign, clinically significant bleeding, total procedure time, other biopsy-related symptoms, as well as diagnostic yield. This study prospectively enrolled patients referred to the radiology department for outpatient-based U.S. guided PLB with an enrollment goal of 122 patients. Between October 2022 and May 2023, patients meeting the following inclusion and exclusion criteria were screened and prospectively enrolled. This figure summarizes the flow of our study. The enrolled patients were randomized into either the coaxial method with NTP or the conventional method in a one-to-one -one ratio. The coaxial method with NTP only required single liver capsule penetration, followed by multiple gun biopsies and subsequent NTP by gelatin surrey injection. CT evaluation was indicated in the presence of clinical signs of persistent bleeding or increasing ascites or hemoperitoneum on follow-up sonography or persistent patent track sign lasting for more than 30 minutes. All patients underwent two-hour observation after biopsy and discharged afterwards if there were no remarkable clinical signs or imaging signs of bleeding. The patients were then followed up by phone calls at one day and one week after the procedure for evaluation of potential delayed bleeding. After random allocation of the enrolled 122 patients into either the coaxial method with NTP group or the conventional group, 15 patients were excluded due to withdrawal of consent, small liver lesion, biopsy unfeasible cases, and non-adherence to the allocated protocol. As a result, there were 54 patients in the coaxial method with NTP group and 53 patients in the conventional group eligible for a final analysis. The patent track sign was less frequently detected in the coaxial method with NTP compared with the conventional method with statistical significance. None of the patients in either group showed significant bleeding or delayed bleeding. The coaxial method with NTP showed shorter procedure time than the conventional method but without statistical significance. Both methods showed high diagnostic yield. 
there were no other significant differences in other biopsy-related symptoms. As shown on this slide, when patent track sign was present, the duration of the sign was shorter in the coaxial method with NTP group than in the conventional method group. All patent track signs were resolved within 30 minutes. This indicated the safety of outpatient-based PLB and also suggested that a 30-minute observation period might be sufficient to exclude potentially significant bleeding. On univariable and multivariable analyses, the coaxial method with NTP was significantly associated with lower risk of patent track sign, while subcapsular location was significantly associated with higher risk of patent track sign. There are some limitations in this study. Firstly, the coaxial method with NTP was not directly compared with the coaxial method without NTP. Secondly, this study was conducted in a single institution with two operators who were not blinded to the patient's coagulation indices, medical histories, or comorbidities. In addition, the primary endpoint was the presence of patent track sign rather than clinically significant bleeding. Due to its rare incidence, setting clinically significant bleeding as the primary endpoint would require an impractically large sample size. In conclusion, this prospective randomized controlled study revealed that compared to the conventional method, the coaxial method with NTP revealed significantly lower rate of the patent track sign after US guided PLB in the acquisition of three or more tissue cores. The lower risk of bleeding complications suggests that the coaxial method with NTP could be considered a viable option for acquiring multiple liver tissue cores on an outpatient basis. This is the end of the video summary of my research. Thank you for your attention.